Hello everyone and welcome back to Retaking the Nation. It's been a minute since we've done a 2024 Senate prediction. I thought, hey, maybe it's time to reopen that up and get a fresh prediction going on. You should like and subscribe to the channel to get political news and commentary on culture, politics, religion, and etc. Anyways, let's get into this Senate map here. Fairly favorable for Republicans, I would say, but I want to start out, let's mark some of the safe states we kind of know. Let's get those states out of the way here, for Democrats at least. It's going to be Maryland, it's going to be Delaware, it's going to be a majority of the Northeast with uh, Vermont and Maine lumped in there, of course, with independent candidates, but they caucus with the Democrats, so uh, it's the same regardless. And then California and Washington, I would also lump into those categories there. That's kind of what I see to be the extent of the safe states. Actually, I'm going to throw Minnesota in there. It will be closer. But Amy Klobuchar is just a political um, juggernaut, election juggernaut when it comes to running in Minnesota. And then we also have New York. I'm not going to put New Jersey in that category. There's, uh, there's some contingencies there, uh, I would say, regarding New Jersey. But this looks to be the safe Democratic map. Now let's look at the safe Republican map here. We've got a lot of the Great Plains areas. Yes, Josh Hawley will be safe. Marshall Blackburn, Mississippi. I'm not going to put Florida in that category quite yet. Let's go with uh, Utah as well. North Dakota. Ohio is not going to be safe. Indiana will. Um, and even West Virginia. Whether Manchin runs or not, it doesn't matter. Um, Jim Justice has a massive lead. Pulling momentum-wise, people are done with Joe Manchin. And uh, it will be a safe victory, assuming Jim Justice uh, is the nominee, and I don't think many are really even contesting that point uh, when it comes to that race. Anyways, this is the safe maps Republicans. They just got to pick up three of the remaining 12 in order to get a majority, um, and it seems seems rather likely that they're going to do that, but let's look at the likely Democrat states. I would throw New Mexico in the likely column. I don't think it will be a greater than 10-point victory. Could be. Um, I'm not exactly sure. But I do think it's a likely state. Same thing with something like New Jersey. It's going to be a likely state for Democrats if Bob Menendez is on the ballot. I think that's a possibility. Now, if he decides not to run or is unable to run for whatever reason, and they get another generic Democrat in there, uh, the state could easily become safe. I think that's pretty clear there. But I'm going to put it as likely because we don't know. There's some factors going into that race, and we just don't exactly know. Uh, if he's going to win by a 10 plus point margin, for instance. So that's what I see as the likely states for Democrats. Let's look at the likely states for Republicans. We've got Florida. So many reasons why it's trending to the right. Rick Scott, despite being in close elections, he does seem to pull out the victory. Uh, it doesn't look like Democrats are going to throw up much of a fight there for that Senate race. They're going to be dumping money into Ohio, Montana, and the remaining Rust Belt and South uh, Western states. So I see that as going likely. Same thing with Texas, as state Democrats there uh, are not running a very popular candidate and someone who I think will do well against Ted Cruz, who should be well-funded. His image has improved this time around, and Donald Trump will be on the ballot. That's a recipe uh, for about a seven or eight point victory there, in my opinion. So Republicans are already at 50. They've already picked up one, essentially. And now I want to look at the, what I think the lean states could be for Democrats. I'm going to put Pennsylvania in that column. I do think Pennsylvania will be uh, a victory for Democrats, but because Donald Trump is on the ballot, and I think he'll outrun Dave McCormick by four or five points, and I do think he'll be effectively tied with Biden, maybe win by one, lose by one, it's likely that Senate race will kind of land in the lean column. Could be could be likely, but I think a four or five point win for Bob Casey there is, is probably the likely outcome. And I'm going to say the same thing about Michigan and Wisconsin. I think they'll be closer with Trump on the ballot, but if the uh, Republicans are unable to muster a candidate that's able to sway the voters in those states or has the proper funding, I don't see them actually pulling them out at the senatorial level. Someone like Tammy Baldwin, I think, is vulnerable and with the right kind of candidate could go down, um, but I'm just not seeing it this cycle yet. We still have quite a bit of time. There's primaries. There's things that could, could happen, but as it stands right now, I think that Democrats will kind of hold on to that Rust Belt Senate seats by, you know, three to four points across the entire Rust Belt. Could be could be larger in Michigan, depending on the candidate that is ran. Now, in Virginia, we don't know who the candidate is going to be. Um, if it's Hung Kao, I see a lean margin. If it's not, uh, then probably a likely margin. So this is contingent upon some of the candidates that are going to run. But with President Trump on the ballot and the way we're seeing Virginia, obviously we're going to get some more information after this Virginia state legislature a race coming up here 
uh, whether that's a lean or likely. You could say that it's maybe a little too bold for Republicans, but I, I feel like it's fairly fair, pretty fair to put it in that range. I don't see Tim Kaine as this overly popular figure uh, or anything like that. Now let's look at what I see as the lean Republican states. I think Ohio fits in that category. Despite Sherrod Brown winning by a decent margin in 2018, I mean, that was a blue wave. And Donald Trump's on the ballot, and he's going to win Ohio by close to 10. And I just don't see Sherrod Brown outrunning Trump by 11 points. I just don't think it can happen in a national year. And whoever it's going to be, Frank LaRose, Bernie Moreno, I think they're going to flip it by a little less than what we saw with J.D. Vance in 2022. So that leaves some of these remaining states here. I do think Nevada is going to be a lean Democrat state. Unless Republicans are able to muster up quite a bit of support for Sam Brown, I don't think he's going to be able to pull that one off. I think Trump will come close to the national level, but this is kind of what it's looking like in terms of the, the Senate match matchup here for Jackie Rosen. And then another lean state will be Montana. I think it could be closer if Team Sheehy's the nominee, but um, with Trump winning the state by more than 15 points, I just, like I said, I don't see 15 points of ticket splitting coming in this late in the game with how we see the partisan leans of states occurring. So the, the guaranteed three that I've been mentioning for over two years will continue to stand. Um, and I just don't see a scenario where that doesn't happen. The last state that is kind of contentious, it would be Arizona. It looks like Carrie Lake is probably primed to be the nominee there. Um, I know that she's gotten a lot of crap after the 2022 elections, and I haven't liked every single action of her since then, but she did come very close. She did run very competitive in Arizona. And with Trump on the ballot and a third party in the polls we're seeing shows that the third party is basically splitting evenly amongst Democrats and Republicans. I don't see a large portion of voters going for Trump and then voting for someone like Ruben Gallego or Cinema. So I'm going to put Arizona in the tilt column. Well, that could easily be tilt Democrat if we start to see that uh, surface here in the next coming months or Lake's popularity takes a dip. Anyways, this is my map. The guaranteed three holds. You can hold me to that statement in 2024 let me know what do you think about the senate map which picks i got wrong which ones do i get i get right and which one's going to be a shocking pick on election night i'd like to know in the comments down below anyways like and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys next time